If you ask someone who first calculated the circumference of the Earth, the vague answer is an ancient Greek, and the usual more specific answer is Eratosthenes of Cyrene, a Greek man born in, you guessed it, Cyrene, which was part of the Ptolemaic Kingdom during his lifetime and is in Libya now. But what Eratosthenes shares with Thales and Pythagoras, two other ancient Greeks credited with grand geometrical firsts, is that he studied in Egypt at the Great Library of Alexandria, which was the greatest repository of Near Eastern Bronze Age knowledge, with texts dating back millennia. Did one of these texts, an ancient Egyptian text, reveal the roundness of the Earth? More than that, did the ancient Egyptians have an idea of the size of the Earth? It's a bigger question than this video format or my tiny armchair brain can comfortably fit, but there are a couple of compelling hints that make me suspect the answer to both of those questions is yes. One of those is a methodological error by Eratosthenes, or perhaps a reporting error by another Hellenic astronomer called Cleomedes, because it's in Cleomedes' treatise on the circular motions of the celestial bodies that Eratosthenes' findings are reported, so keep that in mind. First, a bit of astronomical background. One of the ways we can determine the size of the globe is to determine how curved it is. How many degrees does it bend when you travel a given distance? Then, if you know the curvature, you can work out the distance you travel if you bent the line all the way back to a circle. Eratosthenes measured this curvature by testing the angles of shadows cast by vertical rods on the northern solstice which we call the June Solstice, or in the Northern Hemisphere, the Summer Solstice. Two rods were tested, one in Alexandria and one in Syene, or Swenet, modern day Aswan. His calculations were based on the assertion that on the June Solstice, a stick in the ground at Aswan would not cast a shadow at noon because the sun is directly overhead. You see, Aswan was at one point along what we nowadays call the Tropic of Cancer, the northernmost point on Earth where the sun will ever be directly overhead. The trouble is, the Tropic of Cancer wasn't over Aswan in Eratosthenes' lifetime. And had he actually gone to Aswan with a stick on the day of the solstice, he wouldn't have gotten the evidence required to make his calculation. But clearly, he didn't go and collect the evidence. Clearly, he'd read this astronomical fact without verifying it. Because in fact, the Tropic of Cancer in Eratosthenes' time would have been a good 25 miles or 40 kilometers south of Aswan. The margin of error given by Cleomedes for the location of this shadow vanishing point was about 15 miles or 24 kilometers, so the true tropic was well outside of that. For it to be true that the stick cast no shadow in Aswan on the day of the solstice, and for that to be backed up by observation, the observation would have had to have been made long before Eratosthenes' lifetime. You see, the Earth's tilt varies a little. It wobbles, and as it wobbles, the tropics get closer and farther from the equator. At present, the Tropic of Cancer, that was once over Aswan, moves southward at a rate of about 50 feet or 15 meters a year. In Eratosthenes' time, the tropic was 40 kilometers south of Aswan, allowing for Cleomedes' 24 kilometer margin of error either side. That means that when the tropic was over Aswan, it was between 16 and 64 kilometers north of where it was when Eratosthenes was alive. Assuming the tropic has been moving at a fairly consistent rate of 15 meters south per year, which I feel safe in doing because if we look at this chart showing the Earth's change in axial tilt over time, we can see that it's been changing at a consistent rate in the period we're talking about. That means the tropic was roughly over Aswan between about 4200 BCE and about 1200 BCE. And would you look at that? That gives us a date range over which most of the ancient Egyptian civilization existed. So to wheel out the conspiracy board for a moment, it's clear that Eratosthenes didn't take his own experimental data in Aswan, but did base it on someone's experimental data. And for him to take it as a fact that a rod in the ground at Aswan would cast no midday shadow during the northern solstice, that data has to have been recorded probably towards the midpoint of that date range, at about 2600 BCE. In other words, the early Old Kingdom, a time when Egypt was both doing a lot of geometry and beginning to turn sun worship into the state religion. Food for thought. Let's not be too hard on Eratosthenes here. He did work out the circumference of the Earth. He was a, a little off because the measurement he took was at Alexandria, under the assumption that Alexandria was directly north of Aswan, which it isn't. 
so even if he had taken measurements in the right places, he wasn't going to get the exact curvature of the Earth, but let's not rob him of his achievement, even if the evidence wasn't collected in the most rigorous way. So did the ancient Egyptians know about the roundness of the Earth, and did they ever calculate its circumference? Well, it's unclear. We know that the roundness of the Earth is simply observable, but it's not necessarily something that matters to most everyday people. Even so, if you know that there are, say, lands far to the east, and you can't see them when you look east with an unobstructed view, you more or less have to consider that it's because they're below the horizon. If you're tracking celestial bodies, and the Egyptians were, then you know that most things travel in circular patterns, so did the ancient Egyptians know the Earth was round? I think it's fairly likely they came close, they certainly seem to have known it was curved, even if they didn't know it curved all the way to a sphere. But I'm not prepared to bet my Crazy Bones collection on it, because not only am I only inferring all of this, the most I'm inferring is that the ancient Egyptians discovered and measured the lengths of shadows over the course of the year. I don't know that they ever did enough of this in enough places to establish the Earth's curvature, however much I suspect it. Most of all though, this video was just to say, don't take things at face value. Accepting the least elaborate of multiple explanations, as Occam's Razor asks us to try to do, means actually doing a fair bit of work to make sure the explanation we pick actually is as simple as we think it is. Yes, maybe the Dendera motif looks like a light bulb to us. Maybe these overwritten hieroglyphs happen to look vaguely helicopter-esque. Maybe the earliest known source we have on the circumference of the Earth was written in the 3rd century BCE by a Greek. But, with a little digging, we start to see inconsistencies, and they can reveal the truth. Sometimes things look like other things because of the biases of the observer. Sometimes people carve on top of other people's carvings. And sometimes people borrow the work of others without checking thoroughly. In other words, sometimes there are even simpler explanations below the surface. Thanks for watching. I am certain there are astrophysical or geographical mistakes in this video, but I don't think anything that fundamentally threatens the basic plausibility of what I'm saying. Maybe you disagree, maybe you have other thoughts, but in which case I'll be very interested in hearing what you have to say in the comments. The sages of yore whose work I write my name on without checking my facts are my backers at patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. Huge thanks to them, and to you if you become one. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity, and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community. There's an invite link in the description.